Hey guys, we are back again. Uh, again. So you thought that you were done with us after we, you know, did the speak out thing, the ha 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 with the big mouth? That was pretty awesome. Yeah, you got a huge mouth. You really do. Well, you try putting one of those plastic things in your mouth and you're like, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, but even if I, I don't, see, I don't think I could even get like that, man. I mean, like, like you spoke perfectly. Like your mouth still, you just. I, I guess not everybody can be talented like me. But hey, hey but hey, en enough about me. Yes, this is please. about the kids. Yeah, I wish you were here. And yes, we do. We are. We, we like doing this, and I like picking on Brother Gary, and I, I don't like it when he picks on me. Pick. Social distancing. Poke. But we're ready for you guys to be back and um, see your faces, your ugly mugs. But in the meantime. But in the meantime, we've got another game for you. So this game is called Which Came First? All right, so you know the rules, let's play. Which came first, that's the rules. So you know the rules? Simple enough. All right. This one or this one? What we're gonna do? Right. Chicken or the egg? We're, we're gonna show you two pictures. Uh, for instance, a chicken and an egg, and you gotta figure out which came first. So which came first, the chicken or the egg? But it won't be quite so philosophical. I'm talking more like items, things, items. stuff. That is philosophical, isn't it? I hadn't That's thought deep. about that. That's really deep. deep. What's your take? Uh, on. <laughs> My take, and God created the chicken and not the chicken egg. There you go. Settle. Boom. All of eternity. Number one, are you ready? Which came first? Boy, in case you don't know what those are, those are antiques uh, from Brother Gary's, well, not even his childhood, because he's really antique. Those are like teenage years. Yes. Do you know what they are? Uh, the one on the left is a Brother Gary. You want to enlighten them? That is the original PlayStation. Ooh. Not the four, it soon to be five. And if you hadn't figured it out yet, that's the Xbox on the right. X, on X it. and it says Xbox on the front. And anyway, PlayStation or Xbox, which came first? What do you think? I know what I think. I know which one I played first. Which one did you play first, Brother Gary? PlayStation. And PlayStation it is. There it is. PlayStation came before the Xbox. Did you get it? <laughs> I didn't get one for a while, though. I played it at my friend's house. Yeah. I had to suffer. Yeah. All right, next one. Here we go. Which came first? Ooh. Just to That's get, a little tough. I love Pepsi. I, I do. Coke is just, it's okay, but yeah, not so much. It's not okay. I love Pepsi. Yeah, um, but see, that has, that has classic on it. That like almost just says it came first. Maybe. Yeah, which came first, Coke or Pepsi? What do you think? I know what I think. Unfortunately, Coke came first. Coke came first. Coke came first, but I drink Pepsi because they took Coke and they've improved upon it. You drink cherry. I drink just about any Pepsi. And he doesn't have one here today. He had one last time. But well, didn't. it's because you didn't bring me one. I thought you were gonna. Never will. Next question. What is it gonna oh. be? Oh, yikes. Okay. So I know the guy on the right, SpongeBob. Pikachu. Is that okay? I knew he was from Pokemon. He's from Pokemon, right? Yeah. Okay. So which Never came first? It. Me neither. Pikachu. Is that his name? Pikachu. Pikachu. Oh. That's how you say it. You're un really too good at that. Try it again. Pikachu! I didn't think you were actually going to do it because I like laughing at you. Yeah. Hey, so Pikachu! I said I was good. SpongeBob! I don't know if I was good at saying that thing that you say that I would want to be. But the way you said SpongeBob, that was really good. Which came first? Um. What do you think? Like, for real, what do you think? I think Pikachu's older. I think, I think that you're definitely correct. Yeah, yeah. Were you guys right? Pikachu came before SpongeBob? Next question. <laughs> okay, we're going to skip that one. Like, for real, we're just not even going to show you that one. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's not bad, I promise. We're just dumb. <sighs> Next question. This is this is a good one. Mm, Th that's this, tough. Th this could cause some debate, maybe. Star Trek or Star Wars? Which came first? Which the came the first? nerd or the dork? The nerd or the dork? I, I hear that Brother Gary has never actually seen Star Wars. Never. Or Star Trek. I know them both, but I've never seen either one of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and my life feels complete. Imagine that. I, I mine does too. I have seen both. I like Star Wars the best. Hmm. Which came first, though? What do you think? I would have to guess Star Trek. Are you sure? No, not at all. Are you sure? What do you guys think? Totally a guess. He's right. Star Trek <laughs> came first. Loser. 
I don't know what you. I didn't even be guessed. I, 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 I guessed right. Hey, we're at the next one. Uh, All right, so we've got Heinz or Heinz. Heinz 57 tomato ketchup. Why didn't they spell it cats up? Have you ever noticed that in some ketchup is spelled cats up? And some is ke ketchup. Like ketchup. it should be. Yeah, that's right. So which came first, ketchup or mustard? Hmm. I have my guess. Surely it had to be ketchup. That's just goes on everything. Here's the big reveal. Oh! Mustard! This is the first time I've not got something right. Hey, if you knew your Bible, because Jesus told the disciples mustard that they had to have seed. faith of the grain of a mustard seed. Well, a tomato, just, just go on. Nobody cares about this game anyway. Boom, baby! <sighs> Hey, so I'm not perfect. Thanks, and the crowd goes so wild. Everybody. Next, the next button. Yes. Oh, Ooh. some easy football or basketball. Easy. At least I, I think it's a football. It's definitely like football, but I don't know if this is easy. Do you know who invented basketball? I do. Yes, his last name is Naismith. Sorry, his first name is James. He didn't see. I know him like that. Naismith, first name basis. You know he has an award named after him that they don't care about. So which came first? I'm going to have to say football. I'm going to have to say that you're right again. Woo! Just for the record, I've gotten all of these right so far. Mustard. Mustard. Come Mustard. On. Here we go. I think this might be the last one. Oh. This is, this they is going... They probably don't even know who the guy on the right is. Yeah, this is going... Well, I bet they do If once we tell them. You guys know who the guy on the right is? Okay, we got in the left. We got in the left. Right. It's Luigi. Obviously. It's obviously not Mario. Luigi, it's Mario, the original Nintendo NES. And the guy on the other side is a leprechaun preacher holding a Bible with a cross on it. Oh. His name is Link from The Legend of Zelda, which oh. is still around. He just has, you know, he, he's changed a little since I just then. thought his name was Zelda. So yeah. which came first? Mario from the original NES or Link from the original NES? Brother Gary, do you know? The NES started with Mario. Heavy Mario. But there's no buts. Oh, okay. it's Mario. Ha! I really didn't want to miss two. Okay, I take it back about this whole thing not yeah. mattering. It matters. And Mario, I didn't want to miss two. Mario, to, to bring it into today's lingo, Mario was the OG. Yes. The original. Oh. I know I'm not hip and cool. I just said OG. OM. Original Mario. Yep. And I'm the, and I'm the OBJ. No, not Odell, Odell Beckham, Beckham Jr. No, <laughs> that's not me. The original Brother J. Next. Is there a next? Please say there's a next. The next is singing. There's not a next. So while we listen to Brother Gary sing, <clears throat> speaking of OG, original Gary. Actually, I'm probably. Let's just sing. Have fun. Back with you boys and girls. Hope you're doing well. I've got a little more space here this time and I've got someone holding the camera so that uh, that I'll be able to do the motions required for this one. We're singing the obedience song. All right, so if you got brothers and sisters with you, spread yourselves out a little bit. Make sure you got enough space to do all of the, all of the madness that we're about to do. Okay, you ready? The obedience song. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Doing exactly as the Lord commands doing it happily. Action is the key, do it immediately. Joy you will receive. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Let's spell it O B E D I E N C E. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Hey, good job. I bet you did great. I still got to work on my emotions, as you can see. So let me just go through them really quick. That way you know them, and then we'll sing it again, and I'll try to do it better, okay? So it's O B E D I E N C E. I think that's it, all right? My camera holder is nodding, which is my mother, all right? She's telling me I did it right. So you ready? We're gonna sing it one more time, you ready? Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Doing exactly as the Lord commands, doing it happily. Action is the key, do it immediately. Joy you will receive. 
Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Let's spell it O B E D I E N C E. <laughs> Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Good job, you did better than me. I'm absolutely positive that you did. We'll see you again soon, boys and girls. Hey guys, uh, today is the day when you get to see your trick shots. Didn't quite get as many as we wanted, but we got some awesome ones. And uh, so enjoy the trick shots. Don't forget about the coloring contest. Have that in by Sunday. You can do art projects, whatever. Uh, there's also, if you want just a coloring page uh, to color, uh, I was on our last post from Sunday. You can download the link, print it out, and submit it. Other than that, enjoy the trick shots. Well, hey kids, I um, hope you're working on your art projects. I know I'm excited to see all of your guys' creative masterpieces. I know I've already seen a few of them, and they're very good. They're awesome. I can't wait to vote on those. I'm probably just going to like all of them because I'm sure I'll be impressed by all of them. Um, but no, definitely keep working on those. I'm excited um, uh, to see some of the good trick shots that were sent in. Thanks to all those who participated in that. Uh, just... Having fun during this quarantine time. It's an awesome, awesome thing. Well, I want to give you a quick challenge here. Go to the book of Hebrews, chapter number 12. We're going to look at a couple of verses uh, that are somewhat famous, at least pretty well known. Uh, verses here, Hebrews, chapter 12. If you're familiar with the book of Hebrews, what is Hebrews, chapter 11? I'll give you a couple seconds. Answer out loud. Let's see, let's see if you're right. Did you say the Hall of Faith? <laughs> you know, that, that amazing chapter there where it talks about all of the different heroes of the faith that we look up to? If you did, you're exactly right, because that's Hebrews 11. Some call it the Hall of Faith instead of the Hall of Fame. Because again, it's just full of these amazing, amazing men and women that served God faithfully, that just, you know, they were faithful <laughs> and they were also full of faith. Right? They did what God called them to do, and many of them, even though it was dangerous, and even though it may risk their lives, even though it wound up you know, hurting them, they did what God called them to do, and were able to die knowing that they served God and were faithful to God. You know, look at Hebrews chapter 11 really quick before we get there. You know, I mean, man, just some of these, some of these characters that, that we love and look up to. You know, the first few verses, it just talks about faith, and then it gets to, you know, verse uh, number f number four there. We have, by faith, Abel, you know, and it talks, uh, it says, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. You know, one of the first examples of a guy just being faithful and doing what God told him to do and offering the right kind of sacrifice and trusting God. We have, by faith, Enoch that just loved God and walked with God so much that God just took him up into the air. Just took him up to be with him there in heaven. It's an incredible story. You know, we got uh, by faith Noah, who even though he had never heard of rain, trusted God and built a boat. And we got by faith Abraham, who just went to a place that he knew not of because God told him to get up and go. And he got up and left and followed God and what an awesome thing. We got, you know, through faith, Sarah. Sarah, who at times faltered, at times didn't believe like she should, but 
What does it say there? Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. You know, she had a child much older than she should have been able to have a child because she judged God faithful. You know, what, a, what an awesome testimony. You know, we got uh, by faith Abraham again. We got by faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. We got by faith Jacob. We got by faith Joseph. We got Moses who, you know, fought against Pharaoh and, and went against, you know, the whole nation of Egypt there and was able to lead the people out through having faith in God and God's help full strengthening of, of, of Moses. Then we got, uh, let's see, we got by faith, you know, and then we have just the many heroes of the faith. There's, there's obviously been so many that aren't named there in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, but many through the years that have been faithful servants of God. You know, and I, I just love reading through Hebrews 11 and looking back at some of these great heroes of the faith of old. But you know something that's awesome? is there are some heroes of the faith, you know, in your life, I would hope. And there's some heroes of the faith maybe in your family heritage. And there's some heroes of the faith even in more recent days. I think of some missionaries and some, you know, pastors and church planners and, and people that they weren't even in full-time service, but they were just faithful, faithful to God. You know, I think about people just in our church today that there are some faithful men and women who are great examples. There are people to look up to. Many of you uh, kids know Brother Dan. Brother Dan teaches Super Church. Uh, at times he ran Super Church for many years and he still comes in and visits and says hi and, and teaches you know, Super Church often because he loves you guys. He loves you kids. And you know, Is Brother Dan a, a full-time pastor or missionary? No, he's, he's a, a faithful man, a faithful husband, a faithful father, and works a job. But can I tell you something? Brother Dan is about as good of an example as you're ever going to find anywhere. I'm telling you right now, I, I'm 28 years old, and when I grow up, I want to be like Brother Dan. Because Brother Dan is just a faithful, faithful man that trusts God, does what God calls him to do, is always there for others. I, I, I think Brother Dan's name could fit right alongside some of these heroes of the faith in my mind. You know, I think about Pastor Russ. Pastor Russ who's just a great godly example of a man who's trusted God for ages and just loved God for his whole life and done what God told him to do. And he's just a faithful, faithful man. You know, there, there are tons of examples of people like that, that, you know, we can look to the Bible, obviously, as there's great examples in the Bible, but, you know, there are also some great examples in your life. And I want you to just with that idea, look at Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. What does it say? It says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. It's talking about all those believers there in Hebrews chapter 11, uh, the, you know, Abraham and Enoch and Moses and all them, and then the unnamed heroes of the faith. You know, and I, I love verse 39. It says, and these all having obtained a good report through faith, you know, just faithful, faithful people. And saying, surrounded by all of these faithful examples, all of these amazing heroes of the faith, what should we do? It says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Uh, the author of Hebrews here, he's just saying that, and look to all these great examples around you. Get rid of the sin and do what God has called you to do in your life. Run your race. Because here's the, here's the thing. You don't have to part the Red Sea to be a great Christian. You don't have to follow the steps of Abraham to be a, a great Christian. You don't have to march around the walls of Jericho seven times to be a great Christian. You've got to do what God is going to call you to do. And you've got to live the Christian life that God wants you to live. And that might be, right now, that might just be being nice to your brothers and sisters. Uh, right now, that's just reading your Bible and praying. Right now, that's being a soul winner. Right now, that's honoring your mother and father. Right now, that's doing whatever it is God has put before you to do. Because you know, I've said this a million times, and others have said this, that God is going to use the young men and young women of Rochester Hills Baptist Church in incredible ways. God wants to use you to shake the world. Uh, but I, I just want to encourage you, you don't need to follow the steps of one of these heroes, but what you ought to do is look to them as an example. 
Look at their faith and look at how they trusted God. Looked at how even though many of these had incredible talents, some of them didn't. The unifying idea here of these people is that they had faith in God and they trusted God. They looked to God and they followed God no matter what. And I just want to encourage you with this simple thought that you have great godly examples to learn from here in this Bible. You know, you have some great, incredible stories, true stories of men and women that served God faithfully. Learn from those. You know, Brendan is doing some great messages through just some of these characters in the Bible. You've heard about many of them recently through other videos. I've talked about some of them. You're going to hear about more of them, you know, in the coming weeks and years and months. Learn from those examples of godly men and women in the Bible. But you know what else is awesome? Like I said, there are some godly men and women in your life that would be great people to learn from. You know, if you got a mom and dad that love you and love God, learn from them. Ask them questions. Mom, dad, what does this mean? I was reading in my Bible and I don't know what this means. What, what is, can you help me with that? Ask them those kind of questions. What does it mean to be a Christian? How would a Christian respond to this? Ask them those questions and learn from them. We have some godly older siblings. You have some godly aunts and uncles. They have some godly friends. I know for sure you got some godly people in the church that love you kids and care about you kids. Learn from them. Talk to them. Get, get whatever you can get out of them that they want to help you to live the Christian life that God has set before you. The, the race that is yours to run. They want to be your cheerleader. They want to be your helper. They want to be, be an encourager to you in that race. And then last thought, look at just that next verse. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. You know, we have, again, great men and women of the past in, in the word of God that we can look to and listen to and learn from. You have great men and women in your life that you can look to and learn from. And most importantly, we have Jesus Christ who we can look unto as our, our best and greatest example of how to live. You know, we need to look at how Jesus was compassionate and look at how Jesus served God no matter what and how he said, not my will, but your will, Lord, and how he loved people and cared for people and forgave and, and trusted God. Any, any good example we can find, we can find in the life of Jesus. And I just want to encourage you just with this simple thought, learn from others. You know, I, I, like I said, I'm 28 years old. I'm a youth pastor. I work at the church. Do you think I don't need to learn from people? No, I definitely still need to, to learn from others. And I'm looking un, unto, you know, Jesus and I'm looking unto the heroes of the Bible. And there's men and women in my life that I look up to and can trust and ask questions to and get help from and encouragement from. And that's no different for you guys. It, God has provided us with many examples to look to and learn from. Have you ever played the game Follow the Leader? You know, I, I, maybe you played that game maybe when you were younger, maybe back in the good old days when you were younger. No, it's just a game where you, you follow the steps and the actions of somebody else. You know, find some good leaders to follow. In your life, there's some good leaders to follow in this word, and the best leader is Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you, one of the best ways for you to run the race that is set before you, for you to, to go forward and accomplish what God is going to call you to do in the future, but also right now, one of the best tools that you have available is the great examples of faithfulness that's, that's in your life. Great examples of faithfulness that's in this word. And the best example is Jesus Christ. Learn from others and that will help you on your journey to being the young man and young lady that God wants you to be. Learn from others. All right, let me pray with you real quick. Lord, I thank you so much for the young people of our church. God, you know I, I love and I miss Super Church and uh, all the children, being able to see them and give them high fives and, and listen to them say Bible verses and being able to preach and, and see them in the room with us. Lord, you know how much we miss that. And God, I pray that you'd help each and every young person that sees this just to learn from the examples of others. God, again, there's great examples in your word. There's great examples in our lives. And there's the best example, and that's Jesus Christ. 
And Lord, I pray that you'd help us to learn from those examples, to trust you, and to grow as Christians, and to follow the examples of those that love you. I think about how Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And, and I just pray you'd help us to learn that lesson and to learn from others. And Lord, it's in your son that we pray. Amen. All right, love you kids.